Hello and thanks for watching. Today we are going to talk a little bit about atrial fibrillation. Specifically, how it looks on the ECG, how it's managed, and its complications. Atrial fibrillation is routinely picked up during the physical exam of a consultation, but occasionally it can be discovered incidentally on the ECG. On the ECG it can be identified by an irregular R to R interval with no visible P waves due to the chaotic atrial contraction. The management of atrial fibrillation can be easily remembered by the acronym RACE, which stands for rate control, anticoagulation, cardioversion, and determining the etiology. Rate control can be achieved by several drugs which include beta blockers such as atenolol that act on beta adrenergic receptors and result in a decreased heart rate, decreased blood pressure, and slower conduction through the AV node. Side effects include hypotension, bradycardia, and hyperkalemia. As a result, they are contraindicated in congestive heart failure, second or third degree heart block, hypotension, and bradycardia. Diltiazem and verapamil are calcium channel blockers that are used in controlling supraventricular tachycardias, including atrial fibrillation. They slow down the phase 4 spontaneous depolarization that occur in cells of the heart. Side effects are similar to beta blockers, including bradycardia, AV block, and hypotension. Due to these side effects, digoxin or amiodarone are used in heart failure patients instead. Anticoagulation is essential to prevent thromboembolic events. To determine the most appropriate anticoagulant we use, the CHAD score, that looks at the presence of congestive heart failure, hypertension, age, diabetes, and previous stroke or TIA. A score of 0 indicates that aspirin is the most appropriate choice. A score of 1 allows the clinician to use his judgment whether to prescribe aspirin, dabigatrin, or warfarin, but any higher than 1 suggests that either dabigatrin or warfarin is the most suitable choice. In 2009, the European Society of Cardiology updated its guidelines to re recommend the use of a newer chad vas criteria if the CHAD score is less than 2. This takes into consideration all the above, but also vascular disease and gender. The onset of atrial fibrillation is crucial to determine the appropriate time to cardiovert a patient. If a patient presents in under 24 to 48 hours, you may cardiovert them immediately without anticoagulation. Over 24 to 48 hour, stasis of the blood in the atrium increases the chance of thrombus formation that can disseminate into the systemic circulation once sinus rhythm is restored. As a result, it is recommended that cardioversion only occur four weeks after the commencement of anticoagulation therapy. Finally, determining the etiology of atrial fibrillation is important to prevent recurrence. This includes, but is not limited to, hypertension, coronary artery disease, valvular disease, pericarditis, cardiomyopathy, thyrotoxicosis, alcohol, which is sometimes called holiday heart disease, COPD, pulmonary embolism, and lone atrial fibrillation. This may present in young patients without demonstrable disease. To summarize, the management of atrial fibrillation includes rate control, anticoagulation, cardioversion, and determining the etiology. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos to come.